through this way too early Oscar predictions for the year 2025, we are now semi aware of the impact that this strike is going to have on this calendar year for the release of movies. We've already been seeing movies getting pushed back as of this moment. These are the movies that seem to be coming out and that I think have a chance to be nominated next year for the 97th Academy Awards. And we have some big names in here. We have such actors as JK Simmons, Joaquin Phoenix, Lady Gaga, Tony Collette. Uh, you're going to have Timothy Chalamet, maybe in contention, Paul Mescal. You're going to have directors such as Ridley Scott, Clint Eastwood, who's still kicking and making movies. You're going to have Francis Ford Coppola. There's just going to be a huge list of people that are famous in contention next year. So there's no better time than now to start talking about the 97th Academy of Lords. So with that all said, let's dive into it. I have approximately like 15 titles on this list. Some of them are like less positive than others, where some of them I'm like, I'd be pretty shocked if this doesn't end up anywhere. But let's first talk about the movie that we have all seen at this point. It is March 12th as of recording this, which means we have all seen Dune Part 2. Denis Villeneuve's epic follow-up to the 2021 film that was a huge sensation at the Academy Awards, basically sweeping the below-the-line categories. This film came out with even better reviews, bigger box office, and you're going to have to be sure that this film is going to be a big deal for Warner Brothers. At this moment, here are the ones that I listed as probable for Dune Part 2 to receive nominations for. Let's just talk about some of the big uh, ones that are below the lines. Best visual effects. This is undoubtedly the winner. Until something else comes out and proves that they deserve it more, we'll get to a few of those titles later. later. Right now, visual effects feels like it is locked and safe for Dune Part 2. We also have cinematography. We also have costuming. We have sound. We have a score. We have musical score by Hans Zimmer. Those all feel likely. Now let's talk about some of the other ones because I think there's a few other categories that are going to be in Dune Part 2's favor. I think they will put an FYC campaign around Zendaya for her supporting role. And I think there could very well be one for Austin Butler. And I'd be absolutely shocked if Timothy Chalamet was not uh, going to be in big contention for best actor. I think this movie really works because of him. And though I had a lot of issues with Dune Part 2, it's undeniable. Timothy Chalamet is great in Dune Part 2. And I think this is a leading actor making performance. So I think Dune Part 2 will have that. I also believe on top of the actors, I think an adapted screenplay nomination makes sense for this movie. So I think that is at least a very fair possibility to get nominated. And then let's talk about the other two. So I think between these two, Best Picture feels locked up. I'd say if there's going to be 10 films nominated next year, there's now nine slots because Dune Part 2 is going to be one of those 10 films, which leaves Best Director. Now, of course, The Academy did ignore Denis Villeneuve the first time. And there's going to be some big names on here, but at this moment, I think it is fair to say that Denis has earned the respect of his peers. And the acclaim that this movie has put, I just think it is fair to believe that he is of heavy favorite to be nominated next year. So if we are counting that right, best picture, best director, visual effects, score, cinematography, actor, costuming, sound, adapted screenplay, and possibly one other supporting nomination. We're talking of probably somewhere around the minimum of 10 Oscar nominations going in the favor of Dune Part 2. So I will officially put the line at this as 9.5, and I'd go over on this. I think Dune Part 2 will receive more than nine and a half Oscar nominations next year. So We'll count that and let's see next year if I am right. What should I do next? You know what? Let's stay on this Zendaya train for a second because Zendaya has a movie that will be coming out in the next month. I think I will be seeing it sooner rather than later. It is Challengers, which stars Zendaya. It is directed by Luca Guadagnino. 
of Bones and All of Call Me By Your Name fame. He, of course, worked with Timothy Chalamet back in 2017. Now he is teaming up with Zendaya for this tennis movie that has shown to be a lot of passion, a very adult role for Zendaya. And this kind of feels like the case of this feels like maybe the more likely film that Zendaya could get a nomination for. She would be most likely campaigning as a lead actress in this film. And I could see this being really like the one true punch of Dune part two and challengers, assuming that this film is good and all indications that I've heard is this film is good. Then I could really see Zendaya being made the case of let's campaign Zendaya and then use the support of Dune part two to really land Zendaya a nomination and even maybe closer to a win because I don't think the Dune part two role has enough for really a win in a category. But if this challenger's role really is her coming to Hollywood party, the I'm here statement, the I'm a movie star statement then I think challengers has a good chance. So I put in penciling challengers, I wrote Zendaya and I wrote screenplay. If I am correct, I believe this is an original screenplay, but these things always change. And then you find out, oh, it's actually based on this short story. I don't believe that's the case. So I think it's an original screenplay. So I just kind of generally kept it at screenplay, which let's talk about Luca Guadagnino real quick, because apparently he has two films coming out this year. He has Challengers and he has this movie called Queer starring Daniel Craig. This movie is supposed to come out sometime this summer. I think it's kind of that August release date is what they were looking for. Luca Guadagnino's Queer. I believe they started filming and I want to say they had to halt production due to the uh, SAG strike. I am hesitant to believe that Guadagnino is going to have two films releasing in this calendar year that close together. But keep an eye on that because I... been hearing enough that this could be Daniel Craig's first Oscar nomination. So keep an eye on queer news uh, for now. So we've talked about Dune part two. We've talked about challengers. We've talked about queer. Those are three movies out of the way. Let's do another really fun one real quick. And I think this one's just a, let's just kind of get it out of the way right now. This summer in June, you have inside out Two. The 2015 film won Best Animated Picture that year. A lot of people thought it should be nominated for Best Picture that year. Inside Out is a delight. And this, if we are to believe what the trailers have shown us so far, Inside Out 2 could be just as good. And Pixar could use a win because it's been a few years since Pixar has won the Best Animated Film at the Academy Awards. I believe the last one was Soul, which was a 2020 film. They lost for Turning Red. They lost for Elemental last year. I really think Pixar has confidence in Inside Out 2. And like I said, if the trailers is anything to be believed, then we got a winner on our hands. So that's Inside Out 2. So I'm crossing that off my list right now. Let's talk about this other one. I don't know. Okay, let's just get into it right now. Ridley Scott has Gladiator Part 2 coming out this year. Uh, Again, assuming everything is going according to plan, this is being distributed by Paramount and Universal, from my understanding. And Ridley Scott's been quite a divisive figure this past really decade, especially with the Academy uh, Awards. You know, he can get nominations for like Jared Leto and House of Gucci. He can receive below-the-line nominations for Napoleon. He can get Christopher Plummer nominated for Best Supporting Actor and All the Money in the World. And then he can like have The Martian, which becomes a breakout hit that year in 2015. What is Gladiator 2 about to do? The reports of this film is the budget skyrocketed. I think they were originally planning for somewhere around $150 million. I've heard that budget doubled uh, based on reports of that. Does Ridley Scott still have the juice? Because Napoleon was divisive last year. This is obviously him following up his Oscar winning film uh, from the from 2000. So let's just talk about a few categories that I think it is at least fair to put it in. I think all the below the line categories are in there. I think Hans Zimmer, I believe, is returning to do the score for Gladiator. You have visual effects, which I could see it competing in. Cinematography. 
all of those kind of classic ones. But editing, I think, is another one that's very fair. And I don't think I did not write editing for Dune Part Two. So just uh, note that uh, when I t- told my nine point five over under, I think editing is one for Dune Part Two. But editing could be another one for Gladiator Two. So you have those below the line categories and then you have prestige actors coming in here connie nielsen is a supporting actress in this role i'm not sure really her chances of it however when you tell me that denzel washington is going to be in this movie and i believe he's the main villain of this movie all of a sudden i think best supporting actor when i hear that so i'd keep my eyes out on denzel washington uh pedro pascal could also be in contention i think he is playing a little bit of the joaquin phoenix role uh, in this, also a bad guy. Again, I don't have all my details aligned with this story. I haven't been following Gladiator 2 incredibly well, but I do believe Denzel and Pedro Pascal are playing villains, so those could be possibilities. This could be the Russell Crowe coming to a list that we've already talked about for Paul Mescal. I obviously know Mescal has already been nominated for a Best Actor for After Sun a few years ago. So that's always a possibility for this film. And then of course, if this film's great, best picture and best director. I mean, this really, Ridley Scott's like 85. He just doesn't have a lot of movies left in him, just unfortunately. And so I think there is a possibility that if this movie's great, they will over reward this movie. So Dune Part 2. However, with that, just note real quick, same thing I said about uh, some of the other films earlier. This movie with Ridley Scott, Ridley Scott's history with the Academy has been a little weird this past decade. And so his films still get nominated to some degree, and they also don't get nominated uh, in terms of other ones. Uh, There's this movie called The Outrun coming out, uh, starring Sarsha Ronan. I believe it premiered at Sundance this year. Look out for this film and Best Actress from everything that I've heard. I've heard people are pretty over the moon on this Arce Ronan performance. And uh, she's just been a popular actress and she's been great since really her debut in like, what was her first film that people knew her for? Was it Lady Bird? I don't remember if people knew her. I know she's in the, her probably her first real role is, am I, is it the Grand Budapest Hotel? Tell me in the comments, but do keep an eye out for the outrun. I've been hearing people talk about this next movie, which is Yorgos Lanthimos follow up to poor things. It is called kinds of kindness. Uh, Emma stone is going to be in this movie and you also have Willem Dafoe in this movie. So obviously right there, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's a guaranteed uh, best picture. That's guaranteed director. That's a guaranteed actress win or nomination. And that's a guaranteed supporting actor, at least in contention. I'm here to tell you from everything that I've heard about this movie is this plays much more like an anthology story. So it's a little bit more short story form to it. Not necessarily a movie that they're going to break into shorts, but it does have an anthology approach to it. And I don't know again, if that means the story is framed as one story after another story after another story, or if it's largely blocked as an anthology story, but it all starts tying together. Again, I'm not sure on that. I can tell you if it's an anthology story, that isn't something that has ever really played well with the Academy. However, when it's Yorgos Lanthimos, at the very least, take note of it, is what I should say, for Kinds of Kindness. Uh, And, I mean, if Emma Stone got another nomination next year for another Yorgos Lanthimos film, this completely defines her as the actress of her generation if she's not already defined that way Ooh, i got two really interesting films for you uh real quick and they're probably going to be two of the most controversial movies that i talk about so let's talk about the one that is going to from all accounts be premiering at the Cannes film festival uh i believe in may and that's francis ford coppola How many years has he not made a movie? I think it's like 20 plus years. He's returning with Megalopolis, which is his sci-fi epic. I I think it's kind of being described as sci-fi dystopian, a little bit of like current resonant feel to it. I, I don't know what to expect from this movie because this movie could sweep and this movie could also sweep the Razzies. Like, I really don't know what to expect uh, Francis Ford Coppola is putting 
everything behind this movie. From my understanding, he sold his venue and his rights to his wine to finance this movie. It's, it has like a $120 million plus budget to it. From my understanding, it stars Adam driver, uh, Nathalia Emanuel from uh, the Fast and Furious movies and from Game of Thrones. Shia LaBeouf is in this movie. Uh, John Carlo Esposito is in this movie. I believe Dustin Hoffman is in this movie. I, I don't know what to expect here. Here's just a few that I wrote down. I said Nathalia Emanuel, best actress. She'd have to really make that leap from TV to film here. And let's just see if Francis can do that for her. Best visual effects, I think that's at least a fair one. Best actor, the Academy has a weird history of Adam Driver just being great and then not nominating him. Obviously, he gets the nominations for Black Klansman, and then he gets the nomination for a Marriage Story. But besides that, his history with the Academy is a little mixed. Uh, he didn't get one for Annabelle, which is probably uh, makes sense. Sorry, is it called Annabelle? Annabeth. I think it's called Annabeth. Uh, whatever the movie about the singing doll is. Uh, so he didn't get that nomination. He didn't get one for Ferrari last year. I could see Adam Driver getting it for being in a Francis Ford Coppola movie. So I think that's at least on the table. Uh, best director, obviously. I think the Academy is ready to give it to Francis Ford Coppola. I think this is the case of if this movie is at least borderline good, the Academy may flip themselves over for this movie like they will be willing to pour the praise onto this movie heavy and francis is one of the most beloved figures in hollywood history and that could also lead to the best picture nomination again this movie could completely flop and just be the end of a incredible career that unfortunately didn't go his way uh let's talk about a few other films joker Fale adieu I've been hearing people kind of joking about this film, like this film is going to do nothing at this year's Oscars. Of course it's not. Uh, I completely disagree with their takes. 2019 Joker, I think it's nominated for 11 or 12 categories, and it obviously goes on to win Best Actor for Joaquin Phoenix. Do I think Phoenix can get nominated again for playing the Joker? I don't necessarily see that. I mean, I would say it's at least fair to say that he's in contention. I see no future in which he wins this award, but I do want to talk about a few things because I think original score is possibly on the table because it was nominated for the last score. Todd Phillips got the director nomination last time. Is that a possibility? I mean, maybe best picture. I mean, again, it all kind of just depends on the film. I feel less inclined to believe that Joker Fale Adu will get 12 nominations or 11 or however many it did last time. However, here's two I feel great on, like that I would put money on right now. I think Joker Fale Adu, and I, uh, sorry if I keep mispronouncing that uh, name or title, I think Circle Best Original Song, which I haven't heard if this film is going to have an original song. However, this movie is a musical, so I'd assume Lady Gaga's writing songs for this movie. So that immediately makes me think, well, that's probably means it's going to get a song nomination and best actress for Lady Gaga. I think that might be the obvious one. To be honest, at this moment, is Lady Gaga the front runner to win best actress next year for Harley Quinn? Seems inconceivable, but Joaquin Phoenix did it with uh, Joker in 2019. What's to stop people to say Harley Quinn's great? I don't think that bias is there. And People seem to really love Lady Gaga and the Academy has embraced Lady Gaga as one of their own. They love Lady Gaga. So Joker Fale do, do I think it's going to get picture? Do I think it's going to get director? Do I think it's going to get actor? It might be an uphill battle for those, but do I think it's going to do well with below the lines? Do I think it's going to get uh, music nominations? And do I think Gaga feels like a safe bet? Unless this film's a train wreck, I feel like Lady Gaga's a pretty safe bet. So let's move on to the next page oh we have just one uh that i want to just shout out real quick sing sing the trailer came out a few days ago this is an a24 production i believe the plot of this movie is coleman domingo plays a person incarcerated who teaches shakespeare to the inmates or maybe it's musical theater something along those lines 
trailer looks great. I've heard people who have seen Sing Sing and they're like, Domingo is the front runner for best actor at this moment. And he feels definitively going to get nominated. So Circle Sing Sing, I think that's going to be a film to watch out for this season. Uh, we have a, a few more. Let's talk about Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, which obviously Mad Max Fury Road came out roaring in 2015. It's kind of the same feeling I'm having with Joker Fall I Do, where is the initial magic that the film had the first time, is it going to be able to live up to that again? I'm not sure. However, there's some that you just feel confident on. Visual effects, I think it's a lock. I think visual effects, Furiosa is going to get nominated. Sound, I think it's going to get nominated. Makeup and hairstyling, I think it's going to get nominated. Costuming, I think it's going to get nominated. Editing, I think it's going to get uh, nominated. I can see score getting nominated. All these just below the lines. Do I see a future in which Anya Taylor-Joy gets a nomination for Best Actress? Not really. Could uh, George Miller get Best Director? He could. This is going to be the issue, and you're starting to notice it. Furiosa is a big-budget movie being released by Warner Brothers. Could get a nomination. Dune Part 2 is a big-budget film, most likely going to get a lot of nominations, released by Warner Brothers. That's another person in uh, Best Director. Todd Phillips is a previously nominated Best Director for Joker, and his sequel's coming out this year. That could get nominated. That's three Warner Brothers big budget movies coming out that could get nominated. And you're like, wow, Warner Brothers is big. That's three. Like they could really do well. Well, they have to campaign them. And also here's a few other things. Uh, You remember when I talked about Challengers earlier? Yeah, uh, Warner Brothers releasing that. So what if Luca Guadagnino deserves that as well? And what if that film becomes a huge sensation and Zendaya? So all of a sudden they're now marketing... And, F- and doing FYC uh, campaigns for that. It could happen. It, it could very well happen. I'm trying to see if there's other. Now let's talk about where it just gets even weirder. Clint Eastwood, who I think is 94 years old as of today. Don't quote me on that. I'd have to double check and confirm that. But Clint Eastwood is old. And he has a new movie coming out called Juror Number Two. I don't really see a world in which this isn't Clint Eastwood's last movie. This film is directed by Clint Eastwood and it features Nicholas Holt, Tony Collette and JK Simmons and a bunch of other actors. And it's this kind of courtroom drama and it's Clint Eastwood, Hollywood legend and guess which studio is producing it. You are correct. Warner Brothers is distributing juror number two. What if this movie's good? Like, what if this movie is solidly good? And this is really Clint Eastwood's last movie. Well, guess what? Clint Eastwood could be in this conversation. Clint Eastwood could be in the conversation for director. He could be in the conversation for picture. He could be in the conversation for screenplay. I don't think he wrote the screenplay, but you know what I'm saying. This movie, juror number two, could be in the conversation for screenplay. Nicholas Holt could be a Best Actor nomination. Tony Collette could be a Best Supporting Actress. J.K. Simmons, you know the Academy loves him after that uh, nomination he received for that I Love Lucy movie he made for uh, Aaron Sorkin a few years ago. Uh, Being the Ricardos, that's the name of that movie that everyone forgot. J.K. Simmons, a beloved figure in the uh, Academy already. He could get a nomination. Well, now all of a sudden, Warner Brothers is releasing movies in the same calendar year for Joker Fale Adu, Dune Part 2, Challengers, Furiosa and Mad Max Saga, and Juror Number 2. That's a lot of movies. And that's a lot of possible best supporting actors. That's a lot of best actors. That's a lot of best supporting actresses. That's a lot of best directors, particularly. Well, that's it doesn't end there. Warner Brothers has a crazy release that I didn't actually realize until today, because here's a few other movies that I wanted to highlight just real quick that I think at the very least are in contention for some categories. Now, I don't think necessarily these films are going to get into the best picture race or the best director race, but they'll be competing in other categories. I think Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Tim Burton's sequel to Beetlejuice. I said Beetlejuice three times. Oopsie. I hope he doesn't appear right behind me. 
He didn't. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Well, kind of consider it a really good chance to get costuming, makeup and hairstyling. Uh, those are two nominations it could get. I'd, I, I think a best actor belief for Michael Keaton is probably ill-advised to take that bet. But I mean, you never know. I don't think that would ha ever happen. But special effects could happen if Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice really does embrace the practical effects. And you could see production design. Like if it really feels like the old school 1980s Beetlejuice. And I've heard people, Michael Keaton seems really jazzed about this movie in a way that Michael Keaton doesn't really seem jazzed for a lot of his movies. About. So Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, of note for Below the Lines. Another just random movie that they'll probably throw an FYC campaign for animated film. They have The Lord of the Rings, The Wars of Rohirrim, which my understanding is coming out this year. Could be an animated feature, uh, if good. This could go for the FYC nomination. We know the Academy loves Lord of the Rings. So just note that with interest. Here's one. Here's one we should talk about. A previous winner of Best Director and Best Picture has two movies coming out within the same summer. Kevin Costner returns to the big screen with Horizon, an American saga, which is starring, uh, co-written, produced, and directed by Kevin Costner of Yellowstone fame. Uh, it will also feature Sam Worthington, Giovanni Ribisi, Michael Rooker, Luke Wilson, Will Patton, what if this movie becomes the huge phenomenon because of Yellowstone? Like literally people are just so jazzed for this movie. Each movie costs about $50 million to make. What if this movie's beautiful to look at? Well, Westerns always do really well in the Academy in terms of just like below the line. So maybe a cinematography is not uh, out of the realms for this. Obviously Kevin Costner has experience as a best picture and best director. And you better believe Kevin Costner's ego is going to campaign for those awards if this movie's even slightly good. If this movie's bad, Kevin Costner will still probably campaign for those awards. Like, this is just Kevin Costner, one of the biggest egomaniacs in Hollywood. I hope he doesn't get mad at me for saying that. But if this really does become a thing in a moment, and it does take over the summer, which I'm skeptical of it doing so, well, then all of a sudden, like, the achievement of making this movie and marketing in this movie and releasing it all in the same summer and making Westerns a deal again. Well, Kevin Costner could get that director. Maybe he gets a actor. I don't, I don't think the actor cause Kevin Costner is usually when he's praised. It's a lot of times for with the Academy, at least it's been for his directing and acting or directing and producing. I mean, his acting, I don't think he has many acting nominations. I could be wrong about that. But all of a sudden, that's a possibility. Cinematography. Maybe this film has a great score. It's a lot of what ifs, right? But you're, you're noticing what I'm saying. Warner Brothers has a lot of these. Let's talk about the other big one that you know is going to be a big deal when this film comes out at the end of the year. They showed a lot of clips of it uh, this year at the Academy Awards themselves. They made sure that Ariana, degree, uh, Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo were front and center to promote Wicked Part 1. And just baseline, just assume. Best costuming, best makeup and hairstyling. Those are almost feel like guarantees for Wicked. Do I think Ariana Grande is going to get a supporting actress nomination? No, I don't. Do I think, uh, I, I'm forgetting who's uh, directing this movie, but do I think the director of this movie is going to get a best director? I don't really see that. But maybe this is the musical that sneaks in. And some are going to say, remember when we said that about The Color Purple last year? I do remember that. However, there are a few differing factors. Wicked Part 1 is based on one of the most popular Broadway plays that is a sensation that voters have always gone crazy for, and Cynthia Revo is very talented, and I think they're ready to anoint her. If she kills it as Elsaba, I think that's the character's name at least, what if Wicked Part 1 gets a Best Actress nomination? What if it somehow sneaks in the picture? It's, again, how likely? I don't know but I think it's going to be represented in the below the line categories. I could easily see them adding one new song to this 
movie to make sure they get a best original song nomination. Maybe that's where Ariana, De, uh, Ariana, De, Ariana Grande gets in. Maybe it gets in for the best original score as well and best sound because it's a musical. Cinematography because of everything going on uh, uh, in there. Like all these categories are like very realistic, I think, for part, Wicked Part 1. So at the very least, as of March 12, 2024, be in contention for. And then if Cynthia Revo is great, you have an above the line category nomination. So with that said, Warner Brothers slate is crazy because let's just look at it. We got Furiosa, Dune Part 2, Joker, Fale Adieu, and Jura Number 2. We also got Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. We got Challengers, and we have Lord of the Rings, The War of the Raharim. Again, apologies if I keep mispronouncing that name. That's a lot of movies. Uh, let me just count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are eight movies that seem like they could. Oh, eight. And then I just totally blanked on Horizon and American Saga. Technically, that's 10 movies, though I'd probably assume they'd really focus it and make it on one movie. But that's another movie at the very minimum. Technically, two, but tech, we'll just count it as one right now. Horizon American Saga. That's nine movies. Warner Brothers could clean up next year. And that's not to even mention and get into the Mickey 17 thing where what if they actually push that movie to January, but they're going to do an FYC campaign for that movie at the end of the year. I don't think that's the case. I kind of get the uh, feeling that Zaslav might be pushing that movie for a January dumpy Rary type thing, but you never know. Bong Joon-ho is well-respected. I'm just saying Warner Brothers has the potential to just go on a tear next year, which obviously they had Barbie this year. This could be an even bigger moment for them next year if they play their cards right. And in particular, if these movies pan out. So that's my way too early Oscar analysis for 2025. Do you agree with my thoughts? Do you disagree? Did any of those titles that I read, are you just like, no, I'm out on like, that's not going to happen. Like Joker, Folly, Adieu, Lady Gaga, get out of here for playing Harley Ken, you idiot. Let me know in the comments and sound off below. And if there's any films that I miss, Throw them along. I know there's a few films I missed. I realized after making my uh, writing up all this, I know for a fact I missed uh, Steve McQueen's new movie. Uh, he has a World War II drama starring Sarsay Ronan, I believe, and I'm blanking else who else is in that cast. That movie could easily get a nomination. There's a few movies that I missed, obviously. I tried focusing on movies that I knew for sure were coming out this year or by all intention were to be released. So that was my criteria where the Steve McQueen one, I just wasn't positive on it at this moment. So that's my thoughts. That's my way too early Oscar predictions for 2025. And if you like this video, do me a favor, like, and subscribe to my channel below. My name is Ben Friedman, film critic and YouTube host personality, whatever you want to call me. Thank you all for watching this long video. Take care. Bye-bye.